everybody. I hope that you all had a really, really wonderful Christmas. I know that um, my family here had a good one. It was quiet, just the four of us, but we um, we did FaceTime with all of uh, the grandparents and opened presents while they were on FaceTime, so it was almost like they were here and just had a really nice day of just the four of us. Um, I hope that the rest of you were able to have a really terrific day too. Um, and then, as I said last week, with the lighting of the fourth Advent candle, that was the end of Advent. We have now come out of Advent onto the other side. Um, and I'm going to start a series on the Lord's Prayer. Now, um, some of you might recognize the Lord's Prayer, some of you might not, and that's okay. The Lord's Prayer is a very common prayer that you will hear in church almost every Sunday, or at least a, a version of it. Sometimes we switch it up a little bit. Um, and the Lord's Prayer comes to us out of Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And in that, this is a little, I'm not going to read you the story because it's just super short, but there you go. Um, in it, it's actually Jesus who is teaching us this prayer. He's telling us this is how you should pray. And um, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, the Lord's Prayer goes like this. There are different versions of it, and I know I always say a little bit different than we normally say in church, so just bear with me. <laughs> it goes, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So that is the basic Lord's Prayer. I think our church normally takes off that last and ever, but I grew up saying it differently, so I always have to say and ever at the end. Um, so while we go through the Lord's Prayer, I'm just going to break it down into the super basic who, what, where, when, why, and how. And this week is going to be who. Who do we pray to? The Lord's Prayer starts out, Our Father who art in heaven. What does that mean? Are you guys praying to your dads? I don't know about you, but my dad lives in Tennessee. He's not in heaven, <laughs> he's in Tennessee. <laughs> um, sometimes the Bible refers to God as God the Father because God created the world. And so in a kind of convoluted way, God is like a parent to us. Um, and the relationship that we have with God is similar to that that we might have with a good parent that we're close to. So God's kind of like a great, 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 great grandparent. Sometimes in our church, you'll hear us pray to God the Creator or even God the Mother sometimes. Are these all different gods? No, we only pray to one God. They're all the same. We simply use different words to describe God because God isn't human. God isn't male or female. He's not, he, God's not mom or dad. God's not he or she. Sometimes we assign he or she to God just to make it easier, but God isn't even a physical being that we can reach out and touch. So God can't be he or she, and yet, we try to sort of put God into all of these little boxes to make God easier to talk about. Um, one thing that I heard a long time ago is that God is bigger than God. And that means that God is so much more than we can really comprehend in our little brains. Um, and so we try to shrink God into something that we can understand. And that's why we'll say God the Father, God the Creator, God the Mother, and it really just matters how you think of God and what attributes it makes it so that God makes sense to you in your mind. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is about this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, is in the original language how Jesus addressed God. 
God did not say, our father, like, oh, wise father that we honor. No, he said Abba. And Abba in the original language translates to something like Papa, or um, what we might say more commonly now, Daddy. You know, it's God loves us just like a good, loving parent or grandparent loves us. And God wants us to view our relationship with God in the same way that we would view a really close relationship with a parent, or maybe you have that relationship with an aunt or an uncle or just an adult friend that you know. So just that really close kindred relationship. Um, I know that when my kids see their grandparents, it's been a while, <laughs> but when they do see their grandparents, they run up to them and give them a big hug. They're not worried about like strict formalities. They're worried about sharing their love and that connection they have with their grandparents when they see them. And that's the kind of relationship, that's the kind of connection that God wants us to have with God. So like we're just, that's how... God wants it. That's how Jesus is telling us to approach prayer, right? So we're so excited. We just want to tell God everything that's been going on since we last talked. Um, so let's. we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. And as we go through this series, I'm going to be reading different versions of the Lord's Prayer. And um, as we go through, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about what's the same and what's different and why that matters or not. So this is the version of the Lord's Prayer from our Bible storybook that we read from all the time. God in heaven, your name is holy. Let what happens in your kingdom happen on earth. Give us everything we need. Forgive us. Help us forgive others. Help us make good choices instead of bad ones. Amen. All right, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you right here again next week. Bye.